Hello, Jim and Jenny in the kitchen today, and uh, we're going to be doing a chicken soup, chicken noodle soup. It's that time of year. Uh, it's getting cold outside, and people usually start catching colds this time of year. So we're going to do a chicken soup, chicken noodle soup in the Instapot. Now, Jenny has never used the Instapot before, so we're going to take it easy, take it slow on her, and uh, she's gonna put this soup together. This is a recipe that's not original to us. We found it on the internet a while back and I'll post it down below. Uh, but uh, it is something that we've made before and it was really good. So we kept it and we're gonna share it with everybody else and we'll show you where you can either download your own copy or get it from uh, down below. Uh, but anyway, so Jenny, take it away, start. Woo! cooking. Okay. All right. So we have everything laid out, as you can see, that we're going to need for the soup. And um, now... Tell them what all that is. Yeah. Okay. So we have two tablespoons of, of butter, unsalted butter, one large onion, finely chopped, two medium carrots chopped, two celery stalks chopped, and then Jim wants to add some mushrooms, so we're going to improvise a little bit. Yeah, the mushrooms aren't part of this, but I think it would add to it. So that's about a cup of mushrooms, I'm going to guess. Yeah. And then we have our noodles. We only need half of these. And um, what does it call for? Uh, four cups of chicken broth, which this is, 32 ounces. Four cups of water. And then salt, pepper, oregano, parsley, and thyme. So there's our ingredients. So, um, Jim has already, you turned on the Instapot, right? No, I did not because I think you have to melt the butter first. And I showed you where the button was. Uh, on, the Instapot we have is a large Instapot. And we'll leave a link down below where you can pick this one up, um, probably on Amazon where we got ours. But uh, the, according to the instructions, it says we want to use the saute setting for this first part. Mm -hmm. And so, Jenny, the saute button is right there. So go ahead and press that. And you see it it's flashing, but I think you have to hit start oh. after you do that. Okay. And so now it's on and it's in the saute set, or it's preheating. So... So now it says, add the butter and cook until the butter has melted. Go for it. Okay. There goes the butter. You washed your hands, right? Of course. I don't know what that is. Okay. Okay. So does that take very long? Um, it takes until it melts. Okay. Because you did this before, so I'm not sure. Yep. It's, well, you can see that the Instapot's preheating. So rather than having everybody else watch it preheat, yeah. we're going to go ahead and jump ahead in this video to after it's already heated. And uh, we'll be right back. All right, we're back now. And it's uh, still on preheating, but it's up to the third little Fuji there. And uh, our butter is melted, so Jenny's go gonna go ahead and start adding all of the veggies and stuff in. So, oh, it's sizzling. So Boy, it's, it got hot pretty quick. And goes the celery, and goes the carrots. carrots. Yeah, the Instapot does. That was fast, uh, actually. It, it really cooks things at hypersonic speed. Um, this, this soup, if you were to make it on the stove, would probably take you a couple hours, but because we're doing it in the Instapot and we're going to be pressure cooking it, uh, that's the advantage of the Instapot. It makes things a lot quicker. So okay. now it says um, saute for three minutes or until the onion softens and becomes translucent. So we do all this with the lid off, right? But it'd be hard to stir it with the lid on. <laughs> okay. So now, saute for three minutes. Okay. I would set a timer because I do that with recipes. Well, if you want to set a timer, you can. Um, so Jenny's going to just her because I'm like phone that. to set the timer there. I'd rather make sure it was done right. Okay. I'm a recipe follower. Jim is an off-the-cuff guy, so between the two of us, we do pretty good. Mm -hmm. 
starting to smell the onions and it's a lovely colorful display that Walt Disney would be proud of down there. Can I stir it? If you think you want to. Try not to fog up the camera up yeah, there. Yeah, no, it does. It kind of does, doesn't it? Yeah, how's it looking? It looks really nice, but it's not translucent yet. But we're only a minute in, so. Okay. Actually, I do this all the time on the stove, on a burner. Um, and you really have to watch your onions so that they don't get overcooked. Um, I've done it for a long time. This is kind of nice that... Um, I don't think you have to worry about this with this. It's just going to take care of itself in this pot. Well, and by doing everything in one pot, there's less mess to clean up afterwards, too, I that's think. That's true. Can you store that in the refrigerator? I mean, that's removable, so like, can yeah, you... Yeah, the whole, this whole metal thing will come out, and uh, okay. you could store it in, in the refrigerator. We don't have a cover, I don't think, oh. for this. Do they sell them? Um, well, the, you got the lid. I think it's more intended for cooking in rather than storage. Well, in the in the scheme of dirtying less things, I I like to store it because because there's just the two of us. When we make soup, we eat it two nights in a row, and then then we're ready to move on to something else. So we usually um, store the leftovers in the freezer. But when you do one pot like this, then you reheat it. You see what I mean? You only well, have to. Well, you could reheat it in this, but um, I don't I don't know. Um, We'd probably be better off to put it in a smaller pot tomorrow or whenever if we eat the leftovers. The stuff is looking pretty good. Boy, it's steaming like crazy. Mm -hmm. I cut it up pretty small too because I, I like my vegetables to be cooked in my soup. I don't, I don't like crunchy things. It's like Chinese food and broccoli. I like my broccoli cooked. I don't like it crunchy in a soup. So what are we going to do next once we hit, I see we've got about 30 seconds left on the timer over there. Season with salt and pepper, thyme, parsley, oregano, and stir. Pour in the chicken broth. So, um, teaspoon, 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 tablespoon, okay. So I will move these over here. Keep them kind of precise. So there goes our salt. See, if that were me doing it, I would have just dumped it in there and guesstimated. But yep. you know, Jenny does follow things to the T. One teaspoon of thyme, which we grew ourselves, by the way. We grow as many fresh herbs as we can because it really does make a difference in your cooking, in your soups, and in your stews. Uh, tablespoon of parsley, which is fresh also. We dry some of it, and then Jim freeze dries some of it too. And it does retain really good flavor when you um, freeze dry it. Absolutely. And our parsley plants always attract the uh, swallowtail caterpillars. Yes, it does. And, and what was that you just put um, in there? That was thyme. That was thyme. And how much? You put in how much? Uh, one teaspoon. One teaspoon. Um, there isn't any pepper in this. Okay. Now, it says to taste, so there's no measurement for pepper. There you go. Be brave. <laughs> Woo! We can always add more. Live on the edge. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it for me when it comes to cooking. I do have recipes that I do from from many years ago. My mom, though, and I and I don't measure things, so it's new recipes that I do. Boy, that really made it smell pretty good. Can you smell that? I cannot. Aww. I lost most of my sense of smell when I was in the military. Which is so sad. And I, I can smell some things, other things I can just pick up a little bit of. Okay, so four 
cups of chicken broth. And we typically pick up the organic chicken broth just because we know it doesn't have all those antibiotics and all of the other junk that is in uh, a lot of the food. But they all don't taste alike. The Pacific brand is pretty good. And I, I yeah, it's pretty good. It has good flavor. Okay, okay, pour in the chicken broth, add the chicken pieces. So here are our chicken pieces. And how much chicken is that and what? So... Well, they say um, two pounds with chicken and bones, but we don't have any bones, so. And so how how much does this package weigh? Did Was it two pounds of yeah. breast meat? Yeah. Okay. It was. So we're just adding it in like they said. We unthawed this earlier so it would be ready. Well, we went to the grocery store and spent a million dollars. Okay, everybody does now, right? Add chicken piece and another four cups of water, which I have right here. There's our four cups of water. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna give that a stir. I always double check myself. I think I have everything on here. Um, all right, close the lid and set the pot to the soup setting and set timer for seven minutes. So okay. I, I don't know how to do this. So does it like a pressure cooker? Yeah. Does it just click on? Yeah, like come, come back this way to set it in place. Maybe it's this way. Well, come on. It's because I'm holding the camera with one hand. There we go. That felt like it was it. Here, you hold the camera. Uh, I'm going to hold the camera while you get this on. I, I can't do it. There we go. I had it oh. backwards. So oh. Like that. And oh. then it locks into place like that. And then we choose the soup setting. Yeah. Oh, and, wait, wait. and because this, this is the steam vent and we don't want it coming right up onto the cabinets. So let's rotate this around just a little bit. And then the soup button is that one right there. Okay. And then you'll have to do the time oh. up to six minutes. So you want me to turn then, it first? Uh, yeah, yeah, just rotate it a little bit. Just, there you go, that's, okay. that's good. Okay, and, and so hit now, soup. Soup. Okay. Did, and... it, did it go to soup? I don't think it went to soup. Maybe oh. we have to turn this one out here. Let's do a cancel there. Oh, okay. Now and, soup? And now soup, oh, okay. okay. And then we want to put that on six minutes. So I just press the plus time. Mm, yep. Okay. And you just have to. Yeah. And I don't know if those are minutes or I don't remember if those are minutes or so. I think that those, seconds. this is minutes and that's seconds. Yeah. Think, so. What did I say? Seven minutes? Okay. Was it seven or six? Seven. seven. Okay. So you just hold the button, it looks like. I'm yep. used to programming it in, but you can't do that, I guess, on this. Well, can you? Hmm. I thought there was a faster way to do it than all of this, because this seems like an awful long time to do that. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, I, I, I'm thinking this is hours and that's minutes. Yeah, it is. Oh. So, so yeah. So oh. let's go. Seven minutes should oh, be okay. like that. And then hit start. And then hit start. And so oh. now, now it's on, and what will happen now is it's still preheating, but it'll go up to cooking and then it's it does say that it's pressure mode right there okay and so what will happen it the timer won't actually start ticking down until it goes into pressure mode <coughs> look we can make porridge Ooh. <laughs> what is porridge <laughs> we can well, i think it attracts bears there it is goldilocks mm -hmm. <coughs> Okay. So, um, seven minutes. We'll go ahead and let this do its thing, and we'll come back after it's up to pressure and kind of show you what's happening. But normally, what happens is it goes from where it says on right here. Once it's up to pressure, then it'll switch to the timer, and we'll be able to see that right there. So, and we... meanwhile, it'll first it'll start. Um, that was good. It'll start smelling good, right? Yes. Okay. So we'll be right back. Okay. All right, so about seven or eight minutes have passed, 
and the Instapot did just beep, which means it switched over from the preheating stage to the cooking stage. And when it did that, uh, right here, this is a little pressure uh, monitor thing, or this shows you that it's under pressure. This did pop up at the same time that it kicked in. So uh, when it did that, it switched over from saying on, as I mentioned it would. Um, it shows that there are seven cooking minutes. Uh, that uh, should happen now. So we'll go ahead and let that do its thing and we'll come back when it moves on to the next stage. All right, so the timer went off a moment ago and uh, the battery ran dead on the GoPro so I had to switch it out. It, uh, it did automatically switch over and to keep warm. But uh, what happened there was it, the timer ran down to zero and it is still uh, under pressure right now. So Jenny's gonna refer back to the uh, recipe instructions and what does it say to do next? Well, it says once the Instapot cycle is complete, wait until the natural release cycle is complete. Should take about 10 minutes. Follow the manufacturer's guide for quick release if in a rush. Have okay. you ever done that? Yes. Okay. Um, carefully unlock and remove the lid from the Instapot. Okay, so we can, at this point, according to the instructions, we can let it do a natural release, which uh, should take about 10 minutes. And what will happen is within 10 minutes, this little uh, pressure valve uh, will drop back down and tell us that the, that the pressure cooker is no longer under pressure. Otherwise, if we're in a hurry, what we can do is there is a little button or a little valve switch right here. We can move it to the open position. And when we do that, a bunch of steam will come flying out of here and it'll bring the pressure down immediately. So it's up to you, Jenny, if you do you want to let it continue like that for 10 minutes and come back or do you or how big of a hurry? How hungry are you? I'm, I'm not starving because we had a giant coffee so we can stay up <laughs> okay so uh yeah there's a big football game on tonight we want to watch Woo go bucks so uh we're going to go ahead and let it uh sit here for the 10 minutes or so to do the natural release we're already three minutes into it um but uh well four now so we'll go ahead and let it sit here and do its thing and we'll come back when we get to that stage well, we've been waiting about, uh, it says 18 minutes now, mm -hmm. and the little hoogee on the back of this thing says it's still under pressure. A so a hoogee is <laughs> that thing right there. Like um, so what we're going to do at this point, because we're hungry and we still have to put the noodles, we did switch out instead of the wide noodles, Jenny decided to go with the thin egg noodles instead. You can use whichever noodle you want. But uh, we're going to go ahead and do the quick release at this point so she can take the lid off and do the final part of that. So I'm just going to come back here and go like that. And not a whole lot of pressure coming out, so it was probably pretty close to uh, naturally releasing on its own. But uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm still hearing it. I can feel it a little bit, but I'm not really seeing that much steam. So we'll go ahead and do that, and when... Uh, it quits making noise. We'll go ahead and pop the lid off and uh, That's pretty easy. Yep. I didn't realize it was that easy to do that. Yep. And like I said, we could have uh, done the quick release right when it was done cooking. Um, I imagine it'll just, you know, brew or cook a little bit longer if you leave it that way. So it's just going to add or enhance the flavor more with the spices and stuff. You can smell the thyme. I, you know, because we grow our own herbs, I'm sure that's why. I mean, they just have more flavor. Mm-hmm. So the timer just clicked to 20. It's barely making a little bit of noise right now. Do you have to wait till it's completely so quiet? I would. Um, I, I, it would probably release right now with no problem. But, um, but. You, you don't want to do it when it's really pumping out of there because uh -huh. it's releasing that pressure now, any kind of pressure i mean like i use a pressure canner and you have to be really careful so i'm sure it's just, oh so it looks like it's done so um go ahead and well it okay. just it just clicked the 
little button thing went down mm -hmm. the hooji. Mm -hmm. um, so open you should be way. able to yes, open that way. Oh, that's really easy. Yep, and just be careful because when you open it, steam's going to come out. Okay. Why is it beeping? Just because it's still running. Ooh. And oh, it there's our good. soup. So at this point, what, uh, what we're supposed to do is uh, grab the chicken out of there and shred it up. And uh, it's, I, even though I have a very uh, bad sense of smell, um, I can smell this and it does smell really good. And uh, oh, oh the boy. chicken's just falling apart. You can see it uh, well, what didn't should, hmm. cook that long. Well, just uh, take a couple of forks and if it's not too hot to it's, do it's that. It's pretty warm. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, but it falls apart So yeah, I don't see any that's a little warm But yeah, that's really that really cooked it good It's very tender Kind of like those pork chops I cooked the other day. They, those were good Yeah, those were not in the crock pot though. Those were in the or they were the crock pot not the right. pressure cooker But boy, that's a good recipe. We'll yeah. have to share that sometime. That's a good one. So, Make oh. me sweat. And uh, this is the kind of soup that if you do have a cold or flu or any kind of wintertime illness, this is the kind of soup that uh, works wonders for it. Um, now I do like to experiment with soups. Uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, I, I added the uh, mushrooms in there on my own, but uh, I like spicy things, so if it were up to me, I would probably uh, put something else in there to add a little bit of spice but uh, he, to it. But um, but he does have he does have an option. I'll show you real quick. And this is something that he freeze dries too, so um, he can add this powder to anything that he wants. And this is um, jalapeno that um, Jim. Uh, dried in the freeze dryer and then crushed them up and it's potent And so instead of uh, putting it directly into the whole pot uh, What you can do with that afterwards is just you know use it like you would pepper or any other Seasoning so I can put it Jenny doesn't like spice. I like a little uh, bit, but not I, yeah my stomach doesn't like it so but uh, the nice thing about the powder is uh, you get a, a more consistent or even Flavoring throughout the dish as opposed to if you chopped up a fresh jalapeno where you're going to get hot spots when you take bites that have more of the uh, Chopped up pepper in it where with this you can pretty much uh, get it throughout the entire dish. Yeah, because it's so fine but We freeze jalapenos too. We always have a lot of jalapenos, so I always can cowboy candy and um, jalapeno jelly and then we freeze the whole jalapenos and we can add those to vegetable soup or whatever we want. And we always, we can grow peppers really well. <laughs> we usually have an overabundance of peppers. Okay, so now we add the noodles. And that's what, about six ounces roughly? That's probably about eight. I did a little extra. Okay. So. And. According to the instructions, once the noodles go in here, saute. we're supposed to put it back on saute. I'm trying to find it. Okay. Okay. Um, do I hit? Hit stop or uh, st cancel first to get it out of where it is. Mm -hmm. Now go saute. And how, how much time? Oop, I don't know. Uh, six minutes. How okay. does it know that? Six minutes. And now press start. And I didn't know that. So this time, I think that's what it defaults to, or that's what we set it to last time. I don't remember. Um, but we're, we're not going to put the lid on it, so it's not going to come up to pressure. Uh, but it is going to just heat uh, for this amount of time. And it's, it is going through. It says preheat now, but we know it is already hot. But we're going to go ahead and let it uh, get up to full temperature, and then it should start counting down again. Who was it? Was it Emerald that always used to say, I wish she had smell-o-vision back in the day? Remember mm. we used to watch Emerald? That was mm -hmm. a long time ago. 
That's kind of the way this is. Too bad you guys can't smell it because it smells really good. It's pretty. It's a pretty suit. Can they see that? I mean, look at that. That's pretty. Everything looks good. And if it tastes as good as it looks and as good as it smells, then that'll be good. And since um, we made this before for a sick friend mm -hmm. and it was a success, um, hopefully it's came out the same with the ingredients that we added here tonight. We'll find out. Okay, well, we'll now come we we'll come back when it's ready to go into the bowls. So now we're back. Uh, the timer clicked on down, and uh, so it's done cooking now. Jenny did sneak a taste test of it, and she found that uh, she said it wasn't as flavorful as she expected to be or a as flavorful as it was last time. I think last time when we cooked it, um, I used... Um, chicken thighs that had the bone and so Jenny thinks that since we used boneless breast meat in there that it maybe didn't have some of that uh, chicken flavor so Makes she went to the refrigerator and got some of this better than bouillon uh, uh, bouillon seasoning stuff and what do you put in there a teaspoon of it I put uh, a hefty hefty spoon of this so maybe a tablespoon okay so we'll we'll add that when we put the uh, recipe at the bottom down in the description we'll be sure to include this in there but after doing that and letting it cook uh, she said that it was this was, perfect this was my mom's secret with with all of her homemade soups and gravies um, Every time I do vegetable beef or even vegetable soup um, better than bouillon bouillon, it, it adds the flavor. I mean, it really makes a difference. So I highly, um, what's the word I want to say? I want to recommend um, it. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we're going to go ahead and put this in a bowl and enjoy it. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you'll try this recipe mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully uh, you like the video as well. And if so, please give us a thumbs up. Up. And um, be sure to like and subscribe and share our videos with your friends. Go Bucks! So take care. This is Jim and Jenny. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Yum, yum.